Hello and welcome back to another video on my channel. It's been such a long time. I feel like I say that every video, literally every video is followed by a two week break. But this is going to be a good one. I'm going to show you my defense. And this is going to be a full defensive ebook, totally for free. It's going to be on the 3 through 5 wide formation. Now, you guys running bunch have probably seen this formation every week in league. Almost 100% of the games, this is the thing that I encounter most. And this is also what I'm running, so I can't even complain. I'm the guy that does the thing that I hate. But I want to help you guys get more wins in Weekend League as we do around here on this channel. So I'm going to show you the defense that I'm running and how to make it work the best. And to make it work the best, I'm currently in the 46 playbook. You might ask why am I in the 46? Because a lot of popular formations such as Big Diamond for 6, uh, such as, what's another one? 325R, 325R. Uh, not 55. Uh. Now you might be asking, why the hell am I in 46? You know, some popular formations such as Big Dime or 55 Odd are not in this. But the reason why I'm in this is because I know what I'm going to be running every game. There's pretty much no game where I'm not running 55 wide. It's that good. I can run this against pretty much anything except for goal line. Maybe in that case, I might go to something else. But this is so flexible. I know what I'm going to be running, so I'm going to make it as effective as possible. Now, why do I need to be in 46 to make this as effective as possible? Well, let's see. I'm going to go to the nickel and I'm going to go to the nickel 35 normal. That is, we're going to audible to that, but we're going to start here. Why is that important that I have nickel 335 normal? Because I can put safeties in that linebacker. So that would mean that I have eight DBs on the field. I have three cornerbacks. I have five safeties on the field. That is why I'm using 46 you can already see i set up my things right here jimmy ward uh coach guitar and Derwin james this is a menu uh, custom roster so don't go out looking for a team that has that on the regular roster that's just what i use to lab so the first step is setting, setting that up the second step is going to be setting our audibles we want cover two man that is just a generic play call maybe if i want to mix it up i'm going to use that cover four show two that is a cover for a match that sometimes can work wonders if you can surprise your opponent in calling it uh, cover to sync, I'm running that because soft squads are kind of nice and I don't know, I like to be special. I don't have, I'm not one of those Tampa 2 plebs, I run cover to sync. And Mike puts 3, that's the thing that I'm in 85% of the time. But it's important to mix it up. Now let's keep on going. Coaching adjustments, let's talk about that. It really depends what you want. Pros mix that out all game. I'm going to give you kind of like the outline and then you can kind of mix around depending on what you see. I'm also going to show you how to defend different types of formations. And depending on that, you will need specific zone drops. So I start off every game by one of two things. Either I have my curl flats on 20 and my regular flats on 5 or I turn it around. I have this on 20 and this on 5. I'm currently experiencing, with, uh, experimenting a little bit with that. It's working quite well. But it's just personal preference. In that case, you would use curl flats as hard flats and cloud flats, hard flats, that kind of stuff as your curl flats. It's, it takes a while to get used to, but it can be nice. But we'll start off with uh, the regular stuff first. In these hooks, I generally don't change them. If I change them, then it's only because maybe I want them to cover an in route, then I may put it to 10. But this is generally what will, will stay uh, the same. And ball and air defense, I just go like, I just like going play ball. Maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't. Also, like, I just see this uh, nice little hair. Nice. And all flip defensive play call on. Because it's a nickel formation, I don't want to get run on. This ebook is going to be split into a couple of different parts. I'll first show you the user rush. Then we will go into defending specific formations. Mainly the three most popular ones. Which is going to be gun bunch, bunch tight end, and trips tight end. That will all happen in this video. Let's start off with the... Um, Let's start off with the blitz first, and I'm gonna come out in 3 to 5 normal, and we'll just come out against Punch. Why not? C spot, go. Nice, that's a good play. So, we press square, we press left on the D pad, and then we press R1. This is the user rush. We shift our line to one side, then slant our line outside. I like to press, and then if they snap the ball, I will just shoot right in. Boom. That looked pretty slow right there. If you have a 99 speed user or something like that, I'm currently using the Derwin James uh, in my ultimate team. He's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. But look at how quickly I can set this up. Now if I snap the ball, nice. I can get through there. Uh, Derwin James, he looks a little bit slow right there. But in ultimate team, again, you have 99 speed safeties. It's very tough to combat that. Now, the only... Or, yeah. Let, let's just talk about it. 
if you block your running back as an offensive player, you can make that work or you can block it. That's why I don't really like the use rush too much anymore. I pretty much play coverage 95% of the time. Sometimes against center center stuff such as strong close, I will send the pressure, but not a lot because it's just people have gotten way too comfortable against it. So this is what I've been doing recently to kind of like still get pressure even though I'm running only three people. I put three double or nothings at these spots right here. One, two, three. There is another thing that I've been trying is double or nothing and edge threat or just edge, edge threat on these two guys right here, right here, right here. But this really depends on what you want to go for because this is very expensive. If you want some defensive abilities like acrobat on your safeties and cornerbacks, then you're not going to be able to afford that and have these edge threats. So this is why it kind of uh, depends on what you want. I'm not getting as much pressure without the edge threats, uh, just the double or nothing, but I still get some type of pressure. And it's just important for you guys to know what you want. If you want some pressure, go all out, spend that AP, get edge threat plus double or nothing on these guys, and then maybe get two acrobats at cornerbacks. But for me, this is currently what I'm rocking with three uh, double or nothings, and then after that, it's really only personal preference. But now I'm gonna show you how I. This is like my main setup for the generic thing. Is I audible to it? I spread my line. And then I put both the outside linebackers, in this case safeties, in hard flats. Now why did I do that? Uh, because I, most people try to attack the sidelines and I have gotten used to covering the middle with my user. So this is why I feel comfortable doing it. This definitely is something that you have to get used to. You have to cover the whole um, middle of the field by your user. That is sometimes stressful. So it is important to mix it up. But this is my base shell. My opponent is not going to be able to attack the sidelines at all, pretty much. That is why I like this. And you're going to have a lot of responsibility with the user. Now, this works perfectly well against some uh, plays such as this one. Boom, I'm going to snap the play. Snap the ball. All right. And now you see on the right, we have it back. On the left, maybe you can throw that curl out. But... He's going to have to throw it in a tight window. So this is kind of like my base defense. And then, of course, out of that, we're going to adjust. Another thing that I sometimes like to do is I like to go to curl flats. And I'll go on the bunch side with a word hook. And then a hard flat. Now, why is this formation so nice? Because the players actually play zones. If you guys don't know, linebackers don't play anything. They can't jump. They don't have that good speed. They don't have that good zone coverage. So that means they're not really going to be useful. The thing with this is it gives you great flexibility and you will still have players that play those zones. In this case, uh, we're not supposed to have uh, safety as a linebacker and outside linebacker right there in this formation, but we can and therefore we're going to use it. So really, this is a, an adjust heavy formation. Uh, there's not there's generally the double Mabel and then after that you're going to have to kind of think if you're playing against, pl against good players. So just get used to it. Trust me, I'm going to give you some blueprints right now on how I defend different sorts of formations. But don't be afraid. Go into Seasons games and really try out those adjustments. Okay, so now we're going to go into the bunch specific stuff. For bunch, what I like to do is I generally start off with 20 yard curl flats, 5 yard hard flats. The reason for that is not many routes go deeper in bunch. Uh, generally, it's around that area. In other formations, there are some very deep crossing routes where you will need some other zone drops. But for me, this works perfectly fine. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you my adjustment. Uh, this is what I already showed you uh, a second ago. This is the uh, starting off adjustment. I audible to it. I shade over top to get the seam flats to play as uh, curl flats. I spread my line. I, I slant them outside, and I put both these guys right here in hard flats that is my main defense and this is gonna bag a lot of stuff but there are some plays that beat this for example if my opponent were to come out in mesh post or something which is one of the more popular plays the, the wheel rod is gonna burn it and I would have a lot of trouble covering a slant and a post just by myself so in that case there are three routes that will beat this uh, in one play so if my opponent starts running a little bit of mesh post this is what I would go to I would man up the running back with the linebacker i would put sherman man up on the outside guy i would keep the thing on the on the right though because uh i can kind of uh pass the slant off to one of these zones and i want something over there in case that it is not mesh post so this is my defense against mesh post 
I did not come out in it dumbly. Uh, so we'll just uh, make it make it work. For I know this this is really scuffed. Uh, but you see now let's pretend all right all right i'm carrying this slant and now i'm passing it off to the post now that was pretty bad right there this post has kind of like a sharper cut so i was not really ready for it that was my bad but against a uh, mesh post as i just said you want to man up both of these guys on the left and this is generally one th a thing that i will do a lot of the time against some other place too because then i can can direct my whole attention on the right side of the field and what i have currently is i have I say a Simon, Simmons with uh, what does he have? One step ahead. He has a hybrid safety, so he can get that, and he's gonna lock up the running back pretty, uh, pretty well. So that is why I like that. I generally like to man up the uh, weak side, weak passing side of the bunch, and then I will cover the right side with my user. Generally, double Mabel is fine on that side. Or if you really want to go crazy, you can man up the tight end. That is generally one thing uh, that can burn it and or you could do some like this that is something that i've been trying recently just like uh completely flipping the whole thing making it turn into sort of like a cover uh three invert have a curl flat a, a cloud flat out there so generally there's a lot of different stuff i'm gonna uh just kind of re uh tell you guys what we've uh what we've gone over so far i can't even talk right now, now let me just flip this boom so we're gonna audible, we're gonna shade over top with our coverage, we're gonna spread the line, we're gonna slant it outside, and we're gonna put our outside guys in hard flats. If you can, if you get that down, you're gonna be really quick with it. So I'm gonna show you how quickly I can set this up. So I even pass committed right there. That's how quick you can set that up. You can definitely set that up in five seconds, which is how much time you have at the play call or at the line of scrimmage now let's go into manning up our, dif our different guys right here and then if we really want to get creative we can do something like this where we can then man up tight end or we can put the x linebacker in a vert hook he's actually going to play that so that is nice but i'm going to man up the tight end for now and this will cover a lot of different things especially one thing that has, be has become popular lately is motioning out the wheel route from verticals like getting number 10 Hopkins out there and this will work against a cover three so if you see that audible to this coverage is going to get absolutely bagged so this is now showed with the flipped uh, zone drops where the curve flats are at five yards and let me actually do that right now curve flats at five hard flats at 20 or 25 I'll just go to 20 random play that's not what I wanted then of course everything flips and what that will allow you to do is actually call a cover two call cover two and not get beaten over the top that is uh, what I like a lot about this so um, let's come out let's come out in bench pivot and in that case everything will be flipped so we would audible to make blitz three we would shade underneath now these hard flats they play like curl flats we're gonna spread slant outside we're gonna press and then we're gonna put these guys right here in curl flats now if I run this play for example I'll snap the ball now you will see how we still have everything covered. Now it's just that the hard flats play it. And let me just throw the ball away. Now I'm going to show you this against cover two. So I'm going to audible. Oops, that's the wrong controller. My bad. Uh, we're going to audible to cover two sync right there. You can see. And I'm going to. I'm going to make my adjustments. Now you'll see. If I snap this ball. The outside zone or the outside cornerback will cover X. You can see how the uh, cloud flat kind of drops back. Let me throw the ball away. So you see, this works perfectly fine no matter what you choose, uh, whether you want to go uh, with the curl flats deep or the hard flats. It just depends on personal preference. And this would, of course, give you some greater flexibility because you can now also call cover two and cover the sidelines pretty well. But that's pretty much all for Bunch. Bunch is one of the formations that I very rarely ever use a rush. Um, because a lot of plays in involve a blocking uh, running back. So there's no reuse really. So now let's go over to the other formations. Let's talk about Bunch tight end. Because Bunch tight end is one of the things that I struggle most with. But I've kind of found some defense. So let's talk about it. Now for Bunch tight end, we have to change a couple of things in our 
zone drops so we want to go to 30 curl flats really want we need 30 and 5 or 10 i like to go 10 because a lot of people only pretty much run one play and for that i will need my uh, flats to play at 10 yards roughly so i'm gonna come out in tempo 2 and we're gonna come out in punch tight end pa boot over so uh what we'll do on defense is we will of course audible and make our core adjustments which is just a shade over top press uh, spread the line and slant it outside just like that and then now it gets interesting what i like to do is i like to put this guy right here in a half flat and then uh, shade over top to make it into a cut into a cloth head and i like to qb spy this backside guy now what happens is uh they put they put the this guy on the delay fade and that is the thing that i would have to watch as a user so boom i'm covered that and then i'm gonna shoot right down to cover the delay fade the cross here is gonna be taken care of uh the circle guy is going to be taken care of it's just about covering that uh delay fade so this is generally my shell that i go to there is not too much else to it really this uh this is kind of like a defense that i've i've, I've ran this offense last night i was struggling hard with it uh, i was struggling hard against that defense uh so yeah this is what i'm using currently boom 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 and now i'm gonna shoot right down to the uh tight end the cross center is going to be covered, the post is going to be covered, the circle route is going to be covered by the 10 yard uh, cloud flat. Hopefully, if not, you have to click on and kind of try to make a play. That is one thing that keeps this play together. The lay fade and the circle route can sometimes get open late along the sidelines because zones have a bad logic. But this is the best way you can defend against that, in my opinion. Of course, if we now flip it and have 30 yard hard flats and 10 yard curl flats, this of course now changes. We would shade underneath. To make sure that our safety and our slot cornerback are in hard flats covering 30 yards downfield and our linebackers will be in curl flats but you guys get that there's not much more to it now let's talk about something more important though with punch tight end for example um let me just audible to an inside zone now inside zone how do we shoot that we shoot it the same way that we use a rush you will see boom why does this work uh, it works because of the same principle why the user rush works. If we were to block my opponent's user rush, we have to block our halfback. Now, who is going to block the user rush if not the halfback who is carrying the ball? So, in this case, blocking equiv uh, equivocates to him getting blown up in the back foot. So, I'll show you this one more time. Your opponent really cannot run the ball. He cannot run an inside zone. Oh my god, this looks horrible. Let me try that again. Uh, he's not supposed to be able to run uh, an inside zone. So we'll do that again. Nice. You can see if we have five people rushing, then we're of course not vulnerable. But it is important for you guys to understand if you put these guys right here in coverage and you spread the line, then it is of course going to be a little bit more difficult to not give up that many yards. In that case, it's just about kind of making a play with the user. That is something that you will get used to uh, with time. It's just... At the beginning a little bit scary don't be afraid of it you're gonna get that you're gonna develop that skill with the user it's just tough at the beginning to, so keep at it keep trying to do it and always be ready for that PA put over in bunch tight end it's so tough to stop you guys I understand uh, why you guys are frustrated with it but this is the best thing that I have found to uh, do it some people have been running match so that is one thing that you could do is you could all to cover for uh, show two shade over top Put this guy right here in the QB spy and now uh, this can sometimes uh, work but it is important for you guys to understand there is not one defense to cover this play because there are so many wrinkles your opponent can throw into it it's just about finding the place to stop it more often than they than they find the play to beat it you cannot shut this def uh, this offense out a hundred percent of the time just be, if, if a person knows how to run it because it's just so multifaceted it's important for you guys to just stay on the ball keep trying and after a while you will develop a feeling for that formation and you will kind of find some better ways of attacking but that's all for bunch tight end let's not talk about trip tight end which i'm kind of split i can either absolutely bag it or i get torn a new one we talk about the zone drops for trips at end one thing changes we want it at five yards five yards 30 yard curve flats five yard 
Um, hard flats, that's perfectly fine. Actually, let me put some pass rushes in right there. All right, time until we're gonna audible again. And in this playbook, I do not have trip side, but, but I have trip side and offset and very similar plays. So I come on level sail. Level sail. So we're gonna set it up. Same thing as always. We're gonna audible to make this three. We're gonna press shade over top. Then we're gonna spread our line, slant outside. And this is, again, the double enable is the first setup that I go to generally. Now, this is where things get interesting. Because what some, one play that a lot of people like to run to beat this is this setup right here out of level sale or double in sale in trip side end. So I'm gonna snap the ball. And then there are a lot of things open. The hitch is open, the circle is open, the post. All of that has to be covered by users. So that is impossible to do. I do not believe that this is possible to cover uh, against someone who does not throw books. So what I would go with uh, as a secondary setup is go with the vert hook right here, man up the triangle guy, and watch the tight end. Basically, this side of the field is completely locked down with the Mabel. And the only thing that I have to worry about is a tight end curl, a tight end crosser, or maybe a slant trout coming from this guy from number 10 and the tight end blocking. So now if I were to... Uh, look at this and see if I could make it work Again, same setup right here on offense If I now were to snap the ball Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh We now have somebody in the flat that can pay some attention to it Now granted, that still looked open And that is the issue It looks open So that means that people are going to be able to throw it So if we really want to stop one play entirely we have to put our guys in curl flats. We have to put a vert hook on X. We have to put a vert hook on square. We have to man up the hitch. And this is all for one play. This is why trip side end is so good. But now this there really should not be anything open. The only reason why anything will be open is because uh, these players in regs could not play zone. But now you see how everything is bagged. Circle was still open late. But this is as close you're gonna get to defending that. But more importantly, uh, one thing that people really like to go to is a smart routed corner route from the tight end. So if I'm gonna do that right here and play curl flat, what a lot of people will do is they will do something like this. They have a post on circle and they have a setup like this. The post on circle, by the way, in uh, curl flat beats man coverage. So how would I defend that? Well, I would do the same thing that I've always been doing, uh, which is, or not, I will throw a little bit of a wrinkle in. I'll put soft squad right here. I like the uh, vert hook from this guy. I'm gonna, so it's my user, I'm gonna put a hard flat out there. And this is how I would defend that. That is another setup for trips. What the soft squad does is it plays sort of like a curl flat, but if there's a streak carrying that route deep, then uh, it's gonna be covered. Um, let's let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna use it I'm gonna use it and that is the best way I know of defending curl flat There's some other steps for curl flat that really make it tough But I just want to quickly recap what I've talked about so far uh, the my bad uh, the double Mabel then uh, This setup right here and then what was the last one that I have talked about? Ah, uh, yeah, um something like this where i'm gonna have to cover the tight end so yeah those are mainly the setups but we haven't even talked about uh the crossing route yet um the crossing route if i were to actually i want an audible right here let's just go with something like this what a lot of people like to do is this crossing route from hopkins uh it gets in trips tight end it gets past 30 yard curl flats if your opponent waits long enough. So at some point, the cross runner is going to get over the top of the curl flat and then it's going to be trouble for you. How uh, And how they would combat that is they combat that with a tight end delay fade or how they combine it. So let, let me just quickly call Mac Blitz 3 again. Going to do the same setup. And now what I do in that case is I man up the cross runner. I man up the cross runner. I just make sure that there's another guy there that can influence the thing uh, if it gets over the curl flat then I will need someone else to be there to maybe help with the knockout 
So then this would be a setup that I would go to. I always want a hard flat out there or something or a, curve, a cloud flat because I want to make sure that the running back going to the flat is never going to be going to burn me. That is the easiest throw in the game. I do not, I do not want to give that up. And then it just depends. If I want to man up the cross right now, you will see how I'm going to use this on offense now. There's going to be a zone there. And even if that zone would not have been there, the, the uh, read would take so long to make because he has to wait all the way until uh, the cloud flat. Or curl, yeah, curl flat. I always get these mixed up in, when saying it. Uh, he has to wait until the curl flat drops down. And by that time he's done waiting, the guy is going to have caught up. So that is what I like to do against the crossing. That is why it's important also to have it on 30 yards, the curl flat zone drop. And make sure that you have some guy on manned up on him so that if he waits there's time to catch up but this is pretty much all uh there is about to say about this how to actually one more thing inside zone still uh and the defense still works the same for this as it did for the other time so i'll just set up the user rush i'll just oh my god he just caught up on me i'll just set up the user rush and try to make a conservative tackle with um x so we're gonna audible to inside zone, nice. And now you can see how we just combusted that run in the back for this. But this is all that I have to tell you guys. Let me put the controller down ceremonially to tell you that the video is over. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. The reason why I'm running 46 playbook again is because I need three safeties at linebackers on the field. And this really is what makes this formation work. The ability for outside linebackers to play zones, to have good catching, to animate on passes. That is why I like to run this. The user rush has kind of come out, gone out of style. Except for understand formations, some people who run, who run strong clothes. I absolutely tear them a new one with the user rush. But besides that, get used to playing coverage, get used to the adjustments. If you have any questions, of course, let me know in the comments below. Also, subscribe to the channel. I wanted to kind of give you the content before I actually used to subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot to me. I appreciate you taking the time watching the video as always. It's been a long time. I wanted to put this out for a while now. I just have never gotten around to doing it. Till next time. Goodbye, guys. I love you all. Support has been amazing. Let's keep grinding to the 1000.